several videos on mysteries. A couple of them I've just been kind of wanting to do some more videos on mysteries lately and I'm really looking forward to this. And the first one though was inspired by a comment Brie Hill made I think on a recent reading vlog and that was who are my three favorite female mystery authors. Uh, so I I do have a lot of female mystery authors that I love, but I think if I had to limit myself to only three, these are the three that I would pick. And the first is Elizabeth George, who writes the Inspector Lindley Mysteries. And these are such a beautiful sweet spot, I think, between literary fiction and murder mysteries. She has such an amazing depth of knowledge about her characters. And each mystery, not only do we get this really amazing, well-layered mystery plot, you know, where someone is killed or someone is missing, and, you know, you're going to find out how that happened and all the motivations of the person who committed the crime, uh, get a really in-depth knowledge of the victims and their families. And in addition to that, though, you're going to get a really big window into what is happening in the lives of Inspector Lindley, Barbara Havers, um, Helen, uh, Simon and Deborah St. James. These are just all these side characters who are, you know, considered minor characters, but have such a big impact on the story. And I find I'm so invested in their outcomes and what exactly is going to happen to them. She also usually makes some kind of social issue come into play in it. Uh, so caring for the elderly, uh, the position of women in the home versus the workplace, uh, sort of uh, the aristocracy and w versus working class families, all sorts of things that she brings really organically into the plot. It doesn't feel forced, but it's always food for thought. And I just find it's a fabulous, fabulous series. So I really do love Elizabeth George because like I said, just the characters that are in it, I find I've come to know so well and as well as I could, uh, you know, not characters in a classic novel. So I really do love her mysteries. And next is Ruth Rendell. Ruth Rendell is my first mystery love. And that is because uh, her book, A Sleeping Life, was the first contemporary mystery I had ever read. I hadn't really read many mysteries growing up besides um, Nancy Drew. And Nancy Drew is great, but it is kind of once you've read one, you've read them all. So I'm not saying... I, I, you know, don't like Nancy Drew. I'm just saying that I think I was kind of missing something and I wasn't that motivated to read uh, many more mysteries, but my grandmother just kept recommending Ruth Rendell. And so I picked up her book, A Sleeping Life, and I just flew through it. And I remember getting to the end and there was a twist like there are in many of Ruth Rendell's and I had no idea that it was coming. I just, I didn't see it. And she never ceases to surprise me, to amaze me. I love the world of Kings Markham. Her main inspector is Inspector Wexford, and his assistant is Mike Burden. And you really do get to know these two characters. She is a big uh, one for social justice and social commentary. So she incorporates a lot of that into her books. A lot of times the crimes will happen to do with that. And it's just a really intimate portrait of this really small community and Inspector Wexford and Inspector Burden, they have the same, uh, the Olive and Dove, the same pub that they always go to to discuss their cases and uh, talk about their families. And it's just a fabulous series with really uh, beautiful, beautiful writing. So I really do highly recommend Ruth Rendell. And she has many, many standalones, which I've only read a couple of. And then she also writes under the pseudonym of Barbara Vine. And then lastly, but of course not least, is Louise Penny. Louise Penny is kind of a booktube darling. I think even for people who don't read that many mysteries, she is very, very popular. But I don't think she's overhyped. Uh, so I have had my ups and downs with her Three Pines series simply because... Um, I feel like the high that I had after the ninth book in the series, which was How the Light Gets In, was it was real. It's going to be really hard to ever top that. It was just it was kind of her opus to me. But anyhow, her series is the Three Pines series, and it takes place in a little village 
in Canada, in Quebec. And it is the coziest setting you could ever want. And there is a bistro that makes lots of uh, hot soups and stews and they're always baking fresh bread and they make really strong coffee and pastries and it's just incredibly appealing. But within that are, uh, is this cast of characters that um, more or less you see the same ones. She in incorporates certain ones later in the series, but it's just a really great uh, formula for the series to have this uh, village that you're coming back to it. There's several books where you travel away from it, but the majority of it, you know, it comes back to Three Pines, and I love that about it. And so then another thing that to love about the series is the main character, Armand Gamache. He is such a good, good man. I really, I, I, I'm so sad that I will never get to meet him because he is such a good man, like I said, and he really wants justice to be served. He is so... Um, true and honest and uh, even when um, he's not treated fairly he just still acts ever the gentleman even though the crimes can be somewhat sinister some of the topics are really serious it still feels very safe while you're reading it and I just I really like them so those are my three favorite female mystery authors um, but like I said I do have many and so in the upcoming mystery videos I'm doing you'll be seeing some more of the female mystery authors that I like and a couple of the male so I hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you for another mystery video soon